If Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes do happen this year, and the starters don't at least get Gigantamax forms, that would be a pretty big missed opportunity. And as much as I love the Pokemon franchise, there are definitely many other opportunities the Pokemon company could have taken advantage of that they for whatever reason didn't. So let's talk about some of the biggest ones. Here are some major missed opportunities in Pokemon. And these are... Certain Pokemon receiving a Mega Revolution. For example, the one Pokemon that was supposed to get a Mega Revolution, but didn't because Game Freak for whatever reason couldn't come up with a good enough design for it. Having a Battle Frontier in a Mega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire instead of this statue that basically promised us one. Having something replacing the game corner in a Mega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire instead of a sign that says it's closed. A third game for X and Y, whether it was Pokemon Z or sequels like X and Y 2. Resolving things that stayed unanswered in X and Y, like the Ghost Girl, giving us access to the power plant, wherever the train station goes, and some other stuff. Being able to battle Oak in Generation 1. There is actually a way to battle Oak in the Gen 1 games using glitches, and if you successfully do it, Oak's team consisted of Tauros, Executor, Arcanine, Gyarados, and whatever Pokemon that you and your rival didn't pick at the start, meaning that an Oak battle was most likely originally planned to be in the game. However, a battle against the Pokemon Professor never ended up happening in any Pokemon game, that is until Generation 7 of course. Aloma Mola being Love Disc's evolution. Come on. Including missing Pokemon events like AC's Floette. Seriously, where is it? The Azure Flute that was supposed to be an event allowing players to encounter Arceus, but it wasn't concluded because they said it was quote unquote too complicated for players. Yeah, but getting the Regis in Gen 3 by catching specifically a Relicanth and Waylord and knowing to have them in your party, traveling to Specifilog, going west, going a certain area to dive, finding the correct Braille tablets, digging in the correct area, making sure Relicanth is at the front of your party and Waylord's at the back of your party wasn't complicated at all in comparison. I don't know about you, but I would much prefer the Sinnoh starters to receive Mega Revolutions over Gigantamax forms, personally. Alolan forms not being exclusive to just Kanto Pokemon. Galarian forms had a bit more variety with the generations of Pokemon that got them, so it definitely would have been nice if Alola had more variety as well. Pokemon getting evolutions and pre-evolutions that never made it, with arguably the coolest one being Raichu's evolution, Gorochu. I would have been so behind this. Specific fake ones if they were real. I had no idea how much I wished this bear and this platypus was real. Getting an awesome Plague Doctor Pokemon. That wasn't this. Pokemon getting typings that they deserved, like Luxray being Electric Dark, Flygon being a Dragon Bug, and once again, Lugia being Flying Water. Having a final stage fire starter that didn't have to be bipedal. Even though I love Incineroar, I know plenty of people that was super disappointed that it wasn't some sort of cool Sabertooth Tiger-like creature. Not having three firefighting starters in a row, and instead possibly having a more unique typing. For example, getting rid of Embor and making some sort of cool fire electric type. Every Gen 2 Pokemon being available in Johto in Gold and Silver, instead of having some of them being locked in Kanto. Seriously, if there are Pokemon only available in Kanto that aren't available in Johto, they're not really Johto Pokemon anymore. Having more than two fire types being available in Diamond and Pearl, your choices are the Firestarter or Ponyta. The other fire types introduced in Gen 4 are either not available until the end of the game, or aren't even in Diamond and Pearl. If the remakes do happen, hopefully this won't be a problem. Event Pokemon having actual events to them, instead of just being given to us. How cool would it have been if there was some sort of jungle-like area you could unlock and go through to find Zarud, instead of being given a code and then it just appears in our PC. Having an Elite Four for Sword and Shield. I loved the Pokemon League tournament they had at the end of the game, similar to the League tournaments in the anime, but no Elite Four to follow that? Really? Sylveon having a counterpart evolution, like a Steel, Poison or Dragon type. Hell, why not just an evolution for every other type? Please, don't give up now. In the future, give us the rest of the types, because if we don't, 
You can't deny that, that will be a huge missed opportunity. Having the Sevi Islands being in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. I understand, these games are mostly a remake of Pokemon Yellow, but you can't deny that not including the Sevi Islands in Let's Go is kind of like not having the Battle Frontier in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Fixing even more bad shinies. In Sword and Shield, Combuscan's shiny form was altered slightly. It's still not amazing, but League's better than what it used to be. Why stop there though? There are plenty of other terrible shinies out there whose colours barely change. Now that Game Freak has shown that they can fix shinies, there isn't really much of an excuse to fix even more of them. Speaking of which, having no more terrible shinies post Generation 6. I'm mainly referring to, again, shinies that don't really change much, since colour is very subjective. The amount of disappointing shiny forms we've gotten since Game Freak started picking the colours, particularly introduced in Generation 8, is not okay in my opinion. Again, they're choosing the Pokemon to look like this. I honestly would much rather have a shiny form that I hated, but at least was completely different, than have one that barely changes at all. Doing something, anything, with the GS Ball. This had such potential to be something cool that happened in the anime. It was rumoured that the ball was going to contain Celebi, but then after the Celebi movie came out, they just decided that everyone would forget about it. Well, of course, we didn't. Probably the biggest missed opportunity for the Pokemon anime. Speaking of the anime, how about not banning the entire Porygon line for ever appearing in the show again because of something that Pikachu did? It was Pikachu's fault for what happened, but they're obviously not going to punish the franchise's mascot, so they pin it on the next Pokemon they see. That is some BS right there. Being able to use a Pro Controller for Let's Go. I understand that the game is encouraged to be played with a Joy-Con or a Pokeball Plus, but not everyone likes to play that way. Some people enjoy playing the game with two hands, and you can do that using the Switch in its handheld mode. So I honestly don't see why the Pro Controller couldn't be used in a similar way. Making use of the walking and running animations that were made for Pokemon Sun and Moon. It seems like following Pokemon was planned for the Gen 7 3DS games, but I guess the 3DS couldn't handle them. Pretty big missed opportunity if that is the case. Being able to use a skateboard in the Gen 2 games. It was promised that the player would be able to use a skateboard as well as the bicycle in Gold and Silver that would allow the player to travel to some unusual places, but that never happened. In that case, hopefully the skateboard will make a return in the future. Route 1 of Kalos being an actual route. This is probably the single worst route in any Pokemon game. Not shiny locking Pokemon. If you want to hunt for a shiny start at the beginning of Sword and Shield, too bad. We finally get to save right in front of the starters before picking one, unlike the last two gens, but we can't even hunt for them. This goes for most legendaries in recent Pokemon games as well. You couldn't even hunt for Zygarde for about seven years since it first became a Pokemon. There's really no good reason to shiny lock a Pokemon. Sure, they may not be shiny in the cutscene, but that wasn't case for the starters of Alola that had a cutscene where they're not shiny but still can be, so there isn't really an excuse here in my opinion. Having shiny sparkle when they come out of the Pokeball as they're following you and let's go. Okay, this is more of an epic, but come on, it would have been so cool if when the Pokemon that was following you and let's go came out of the Pokeball, it still sparkled. That would have been a really nice attention to detail. More multi-type moves. Flying Press, I believe, was the first move to be treated as two types in Pokemon, being flying and fighting. Freeze Dry is probably the closest to another multi-type move, not really being multi-type, but it was a nice move that was super effective against a type that Ice usually isn't effective against, being Water. So more multi-type moves in the future, I think, would be pretty awesome. Pokemon in Let's Go being able to evolve into their evolutions that aren't from the first generation. I understand that they only wanted to have Generation 1 Pokemon in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, but technically Mega Evolutions aren't Generation 1 either, so why not? Is it because that some Pokemon need to be holding an item in order to evolve into their non-Gen 1 evolutions? 
and Pokemon in Let's Go can't hold items? Well, in order for a Pokemon to Mega Evolve, they needed to hold a Mega Stone, but that still didn't stop them including Megas. Again, I understand why they didn't include non-Gen 1 evolutions in the game, but I still think it would have been pretty cool if they did. Being able to skip cutscenes. I'm pretty sure most people would like Sun and Moon a lot more if you didn't have to make them watch the cutscenes in their entirety every time. They were cool at first, but not so much anymore. If, instead of Melmetal, this Pokemon was called either Hexagoo or Boltergeist. Come on, those names are so much better than Melmetal. And the last missed opportunity in this video is... Generation 4 remakes. If they don't happen this year, hell, if they don't happen any time in the future, you cannot argue with me that this will not be a huge missed opportunity by Game Freak. I understand that some people don't want remakes anymore, but I think it's fair to say that most people do, so why not? And those are some of the biggest missed opportunities in Pokemon. Even though not all of them can be fixed right now, there are still a handful that Game Freak can eventually take advantage of, and hopefully they will sometime in the future. Hint hint, nudge nudge. I really hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please do leave a like on the video, as it does help out a lot. Subscribe and ring the bell for more Pokemon content in the future, and until next time, thank you so much for watching.